about why, uh, what is uh, positive shear. So you saw it for yourself. Then negative shear is really, really easy to explain now. Okay, so I'm going to write down negative. Shear. Okay. So I'm going to draw our element. This is our element. So negative shear is basically in this direction. Okay. So this is, so over here, this is shear x, y. And it's, okay, I do apologize. If we were to construct negative shear, we tend to do it this way. Okay. Shear y, x, but to make it complete, we will do put in the other arrow. So that is what we call uh, negative shear, OK, because I will just do one surface. So over here. You have a uh, Y positive surface. Right, and positive relative to the center, the origin. So this is your X, uh, do apologize. So this is your. X and this is your Y. And if you look at how the shear is acting now, so you realize that the shear over here is in the X direction, but it is what? Negative, right? So positive multiplied by negative is negative. So that's why we call it negative shear. And then if we were to construct the element, So this is the deformation pattern. For uh, for negative shear, you can see the deformation pattern is opposite to positive shear. Okay, so I'll write down here deformation pattern. So this is your deformation pattern. Okay, so now you know the difference between uh, positive shear and negative shear. So let's come back to our problem over here. Okay, so that's why this is what we call a, a positive shear configuration. Okay, All right. So now we're going to uh, construct a mole circle. Okay, I like to. So before you construct more circle, what I tend to do is I tend to call this surface. You put an X circle around it. Okay. So this is to help you define uh, where on more circle we are on. Okay. So this will be your Y. Okay. So let's construct a uh, more circle now. So on the X axis of more circle is our normal stress okay so our our start with minus 60 minus 50 minus 40 minus 30 minus 20 10 0 10 20 uh, 30 and 40 and this represents our normal stress then we're going to draw our shearing stress or shear stress. Our shear stress is a bit, uh, it, there is also positive magnitude on shear stress. Okay. So, but more important is the shear stress at the top. I want you to draw an arrow that is in the clockwise direction. Down there, as in anti-clockwise direction. So this define this clockwise anti-clockwise define the rotation of the element. Okay. So you also have positive ten, 
20, 30, 40, uh, 50. And then you have the other end, minus 10, minus 20, minus 30, minus 40, minus 50. Okay. And an important thing is the scale for the normal stress and the scale used on the shearing stress has to be the same. Or not, you will not get more circle, you get more over. Okay. <laughs> right. So the next thing we do, you have to now construct a minus 40 vertical line. Okay. So this is your minus 40. So the minus 40 is your normal stress X. Okay. And then we have to construct a positive 20. So this is your stress Y. And then the shear, right? You can see over here, the shear is positive shear. But even though it's positive shear, you have to construct both positive and negative shear. Let me define what do I mean. So you still have to draw a line, okay? That is positive shear at 30 and negative shear at 30. Okay, you still have to do that. Okay, why is that? Okay, I'm going to show you why now, okay? So now we're going to find the points, point X and point Y on most circle now, okay? So point X, we know that is on the minus 49, okay? Now, I want, so, I want you all to focus on the 30 now I'm drawing in blue. Okay, sketching in blue now, okay. And if we put a pin at the center, this shear, that I've just put an arrow, will induce a rotation of the element by anti-clockwise. Yes, so if we have a pin on the center, right, and due to this shear stress over here, right, we are going to induce an anti-clockwise rotation. So anti-clockwise rotation and the anti-clockwise rotation of Mohr circle. So this will be our point X. So you 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 guys will be asking me, Eugene, you just told us positive shear, why negative? Okay. On Mohr circle, where point X or any point is is defined by the rotation of the element in shear. So over here at the bottom, the element rotate anti-clockwise, at the top rotate clockwise, okay? So let's look at element Y, a uh, uh, point Y. So let's look at point Y. So we are going to focus on point Y now. And this arrow over here, the shear, okay, associated with point Y will rotate the element in a clockwise direction, right? So this is our element Y, or point Y, okay? So from here, you can draw a straight line. From here, you can draw a straight line. Okay? And then you can also calculate your stress average, okay? So the stress average, I'm going to do the calculation here, I have enough space. I'm going to do the calculation down here. Okay, so the stress average or part A of the question. And let me optimize the space. Okay, part A of the question. All right, so the stress average, like how the the word defined average is is add two things together and divide by two, right? So it's equal to stress X plus by stress Y divided by two. So this will be equal to uh, minus 40 plus by 20 divided by two. And we know it's minus 10. Okay, let me, so we know that this is equal to minus 10 MPA. 
So which when we construct, it was indeed minus 10. So all we need to do now, where the center is, or center of the circle is, I tend to use a green line. Okay. So I we will tend to call this point over here. Usually we call it our point O, right? And the distance from here to here. Right, from the zero vertical line, okay? This is our stress average, okay? That is our stress average. So the next thing we're gonna find is our implantial stress, maximum implantial stress, right? So this is also defined as the radius of the circle. Right? And radius of our circle is also equal to our tau max, maximum shear stress. So I don't want you to apply the formula, the transformation formula on the textbook. Just apply the rules I mean, simple math, okay? So tau max over here, right? So if I were to draw where tau max is on, on this diagram, right? So this is our tau max. Okay, so this is where is our tau max, okay, or radius of the circle. So to find the radius of the circle, right, all you need to do is you have to know this distance from the center of the circle, not point zero, right? So you know this distance over here is equal to 30, right? And the uh, vertical distance, is also equal to 30. Okay. So from here, real simple math, this will be equal to 30 squared because it's a right angle triangle. Okay, let, let, let me write properly, not 302. So this will be equal to 30 squared plus by 30 squared. So the radius of the circle, which is our tau max, is equal to 42.426. Okay, 42.426. So once having known such an information, you can calculate our principal stress, okay, which I thought uh, I did. It. So see, we're going to calculate our principal stress. And principal stress, we call it stress one or two. And at principal stress, the shear stress will be equal to what? Zero, right? You guys are, oh yeah, I've seen that before. When shear stress is equal to zero, means the, the, the force applied to any structure is one direction only. Yeah, that's a principal stress. Or how they test material behavior is based on principal stress, right? So from here, you know the principal stress one and two is equal to the average stress plus by the radius of the circle. Okay, plus minus in fact. So this is equal to minus 10 plus minus uh, 42.426. Okay, so this is equal to uh, minus 52.426 megapascal, or it's going to be 32.426 megapascal. Okay, so those are your principal stress. So I'm going to draw a uh, mole circle now. Okay, so I know that uh, we have 52.4. And then we have 
32.4. This is just a sketch. Okay. And then the shear is going up at 